Ravensburg Lake has a wonderful history and fairly long history for a lake like this. To many longtime residents like me, it's the focus of many wonderful memories. The present is not so good. Only a third of the lake is navigable at this point, and the conditions there are rapidly getting worse. What's the future? That's what we're here to discuss. Some of the plans, some of the ideas, and some of the progress that's being made to ensure that we do have a lake in the future. My name is Joan Jessen. I'm a 50-year resident of Peters Township. My kids graduated from high school here. They use the lake for ice skating in the winter, fishing, that sort of thing. So I've seen a lot of the history of the lake. Not the whole history, but a lot of it. I have been, as I say, a resident of Peters Township for 50 years. I was eight years on the Washington on the Peters Township Planning Commission, and I think maybe 24 years on the Washington County Planning Commission, so, um, and have been active in a number of the organizations in the township. So I have a long time interest in what's going on here. With me, Carol. Hi, I'm Carol Milas. I moved into Peters Township about four years ago, but I'm a native of Pittsburgh. And I live in the Water's Edge condominium complex on the lake. Our backyard sort of faced the water. And uh, I'm real anxious to be part of this committee uh, for a number of reasons. Um, it's great to give back to our community, I think, and to be part of a group of people who share sort of common interests. And uh, it's been a great opportunity for me. I've met a lot of people. Um, I've learned a lot about lakes and history and a lot about the history of the lake and I think we all want to preserve it so I think that's our common interest. I'm Wally Klein. I've, uh, I've been uh, on the Peters Township Planning Commission when I first started uh, and I first started the steering committee uh, which put together the master site plan uh, for improving the Cannonsburg Lake uh, but uh, of course the uh, improvements to Cannonsburg Lake is primarily to uh, use the, the lake as we have it now, uh, even though, as uh, Joan mentioned, uh, there are areas that are just no, no longer navigable. But we, uh, we are still working along this line at the same time. Other people are working toward uh, getting the, uh, uh, the dredging and uh, getting the lake cleaned out. So, uh, but. I am a 30-year resident of uh, uh, Washington County, Peters Township, and uh, my, we, I live in Cranmore, which is right alongside of uh, the lake on the uh, north side of Cannonsburg Lake. And uh, my interest is certainly to help uh, clean up this lake and uh, provide it. Uh, one of the things that impressed me most when I first started on this, was talking to many uh, gentlemen that have been uh, fisher, fishing here in Cannonsburg Lake for generations. Their grandfather, their father, and they are teaching their children and they come uh, to fish in Cannonsburg Lake. Mainly because in Washington County, this is only one of two lakes that are available. Uh, Cross Creek uh, and, uh, and Cannonsburg. Uh, there were three, but one of them, uh, after Ivan, they took the dam out of service and uh, now it's just a small stream. We don't want that in Peters Township. There's too much here for generations, not only for Peters Township, but for the whole Allegheny, Washington County. That This is it. There's not much other than that. Uh, do you want me to Tell them yeah, a little why bit don't of what our plan is. And, and talk about sure. the plan a little bit at this point. Okay. We've started with um, developing this master site plan, mm -hmm. and frankly, as a fundraiser, <laughs> as a grant writer, this was where we could get the money was to uh, the recreation grant. So that's the point of starting there. It also gives us a good kickoff point for the rest of the things we want to do. Sure. And this plan, it says draft on this, but it is really finished and will be approved. And so we're going to be working from that document for quite a few years to come. So just to clarify it for the audience, so what, you're, what we're going to be talking about today is, is a, the area around side the lake, how to make it more attractive and usable and then... Correct. But also then we'll get into the larger problems of the lake and how to restore it. 
these are improvements that we see we can easily do, but restoration is another whole mm -hmm. whole ball of worms. Yes. Ball of worms. What do I <laughs> yeah, want to say? Right. Yeah. That mm -hmm. we'll um, we'll get into a little more later. So yeah, and and really the uh, you know this restoration committee really just backed out of the uh, the site plan development group. Yeah. Everybody was so interested in doing the recreation. Mm -hmm. We also felt, you know, t for this to really be effective, yeah. we've really got to take take care of the lake itself. Yeah. And so we'll talk about that, I guess, a little more later. Yeah. 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 Okay. But so people have a better background. Let's sure. Look at this first. Okay. We're, what we're looking at here now. This is the dam uh, that's at the. Uh, far north end of the, of the uh, lake. And uh, this is the causeway that goes across this McDowell Road. And the plan is, at this point, is there's an existing trail that weaves its way underneath the trees. It's, it's uh, navigable by foot if you watch where you're going and don't trip on, on the roots and so forth. So the plan is that we, that's one of the trails that we want to fix up. And we will probably do that with bark or something in, in that. That, uh, that makes it easy for people to walk on. At this end, this is the current parking lot, and uh, if you've ever gone down to this end of the lake, uh, you'll find uh, fishermen all along, all along this side here because they've got a place to park their car and uh, get in. Uh, one of the drawbacks at this point is the minimum number of accesses to the lake. This is one access at, at present, and this is the other one on here, and on, you'll see on the next, uh, next uh, map we look at. But at this point, uh, what we're looking at is paving this. This right now is a, uh, just a gravel road, uh, and the plan is to put a, uh, a, 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 a uh, watering place uh, so that you can get water and also use the bathroom facilities, uh, picnic tables, and uh, a general grassy area here that makes it nice for picnicking in addition to going here to fish or hiking. Uh, this trail uh, that we have coming across here uh, will lead to this parking lot, which is off of uh, McDowell <coughs> Road coming off of 19 is just uh, off the map here. And this is the, the main parking lot. There's also a, a boat launch ramp. Uh, Cannonsburg Lake is limited, of course, to uh, just a small electric trolling motor or ca uh, canoes, paddling, and rowboats. So no, no major uh, power uh, vehicles or vessels can be in here. Uh, the plan is that we will improve the paving and put in uh, better markings for parking. And, uh, and also, uh, there will be a... Uh, uh, re a permanent restroom here, and then also with this trail that comes from here, goes here. The plan is alongside of the bridge, which is really a two-lane bridge, uh, and it is not comfortable to walk across because it's it's all there is is two lanes, and uh, so we plan to put in a a walkway on the side of the bridge and sort of uh, cat leave it, lean it over the edge of the the bridge here for people to walk across. And then also we have a couple of spots where people can stop here and fish. Off That's of one of my favorite features, Will. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, so then once we get across here, we get to the, now this line you see down the center here, that's the boundary between Peters Township and North Strabane. And so once we, once we cross over, excuse me, once we cross over here, we're in North Strabane, and these are all uh, homes that are right up against the property line. And this property line, you can see that everything that's green is owned uh, by the uh, State Fish and Boat Commission. And so this property, even though Peters Township is here, is, is a state-owned parcel. It goes all the way to cross, and the next maps you'll see the rest of the, rest of the area. But at any rate, this trail then will go uh, right off the edge and up to here. And we feel that with this, this will make this probably about one mile, a little over a mile, to make the circuit. So people can come park here, take a walk up here, take a walk all the way to the end, come back, and they've, they've done two miles of walking. So that's, uh, 
That's one of the features that we are looking at is providing recreation, exercise path uh, for them to walk on. Before you leave that map, Wally, yes. let's point out the, the trail on the Peters Township side of the park is one that the Girl Scouts started working on last September. Right. And, mm -hmm. and um, so that is underway at this point. The, we have a little money, a small grant, where we put a nice information and be able to additional kiosk in the main. Another plan for this year is to begin work on that trail on the other side of the lake. This would be? Yes, mm -hmm. because the best fishing access really is along there. And at this point, at this year, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to get to without going through private property. Yes. So the, um, with the agreement of the Fish and Boat Commission that are going to be doing some work over there anyway this year, mm -hmm. we expect to be able to put in that portion of the trail during 2007. That's great. That's great. Everything working well. All this year, and they're already there. And yes, they look over, great, um, huh? yeah. yeah, we've got um, uh, several benches here. And uh, I believe there's some at this end also. So the plan is just finished, but we are starting on, on putting the plan into work. Mm -hmm. Good work. Good. <clears throat> the the previous uh, map coming up to the map showed uh, the lake uh, McDowell Road, the causeway here, and this now continues the causeway around up to this point. And up what you see here, is so is uh, uh, once again trail that, that we brought across the causeway. The tra the bridge across, across the we expect the this coming year uh, we will plan all, all along to extend that trail here. Now to also, in addition, you that will be to try and that that will provide again additional fishing area uh, for for the people and additional walking. So uh, this will be a nice trail also. Then what you see here. Uh, back uh, a few years ago, this was all blue, which meant that it would have been water. And because of the silt buildup, as the, uh, as the little Chartier's Creek flows this way and down, as you, as you know, the centrifugal force throws the, the uh, little Chartier's Creek along here and, and has eroded this side. But on the other hand, this just sort of sits and eddies and it dumps out the silt or whatever is in the water at that point. And so this has built up to the point where there's actually it, uh, trees, grow, small trees growing, and it is green. So uh, this, this is not really uh, very solid ground for doing anything but you know, walking on and planting. So then we were putting a little pedestrian bridge here that we can get, cut across then so that trail can come across. and and have a have walking trail around around this area too and in addition to that we the plan is to have a uh, a little center here where a, a group of boy scouts girl scouts high school kids uh, elementary school kids can come into here about all the the fauna and all the uh, the various trees the water the waterfowl and this kind of thing here, and then have a trail to go around and, and look at some of what nature has provided. And, and they can lecture and, uh, those 
those specific areas will have also small signs uh, as this is uh, to describe what, the, what they are looking at. So this is again part of the educational in, uh, improvements that we intend to put in. Uh, now this side you don't see a trail and that's because uh, this, this set of uh, uh, condominiums along here is quite a, quite a ways up in the hill and, and it's very steep going down. So even though they have the state owns property along here, uh, there's just no way of providing a trail at that point at the, on this side. But well, you know, that's where I live. And yes. the one thing mm -hmm. that we like, even though uh, you see much more of the lake uh, on the other side of McDowell Road, I think the actually more enjoyable part of our canoeing is going up the, the area that you described there. It's more serene and mm -hmm. very calm and peaceful and uh, makes really a nice trip. So we're hoping to reserve that so that we can enjoy that and future generations can enjoy that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, th th that's, that's pretty much the good part. But this whole area in here uh, we were we got together last night uh, to talk a little bit about what we we're going to do uh, into uh, I guess a home right in right about in here and all in through here are many logs uh, a huge log along here uh, that uh, Hurricane Ivan brought and put into the high water at the time uh, and there's so much debris in here that, as, uh, as Joan mentioned right off the bat, uh, only one-third of the lake is navigable. And so beyond this, it's, uh, it's very treacherous trying to, trying to do any boating, maneuvering, canoes even, is a very difficult problem up in here. Because in, in here, uh, the water is so shallow because of the silt that has built up in here, similar to what is already built up here, uh, and uh, this, as, as somebody was telling us, uh, we have a blue heron uh, that, that uh, also nests in this area in addition to the, the many ducks. And uh, we also have a, 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 a bald eagle that resides here. Uh, but at any rate, uh, the ducks and the, uh, some of the Canadian geese that come here occasionally can almost walk across here. Uh, so it's... This part is, is the bad area uh, as far as we are concerned. And this is one of the things that Joan was mentioning that later on she's going to talk about uh, what we're going to do to improve the, the blue part, the, the, the lake itself. Is it what, anything else that you want to talk about in here, do you think? Well, I just, um, you didn't quite say it, but let's emphasize okay. that bright green area up there, Wally, where the trails are. That's very nice wetlands that have formed as the lake has been silting in. Mm -hmm. It was not part of the original landscape when the lake was a, a full lake, but it's an asset now mm -hmm. that we want to take advantage of so people can learn more about the wetlands and the value they have and the habitat that they provide for a lot of different kinds of animals and plants mm -hmm. that would not otherwise be there. Mm -hmm. Actually, this area here, uh, the reason we put this in here, there's really no access because this is really down again, very steep, similar to this. Uh, and, and so access to this area is almost impossible. Yes, foot. unless we come in from McDowell come, Road. Come in, right. yeah. Okay, we have now the continuation from the previous uh, map. And uh, this, this <laughs> you'll see here, the little Chartreuse Creek uh, wanders in the low spots wherever it can. And that's why we've got uh, this kind of configuration. This is uh, Route 19, Washington Road. And uh, this is the, the creek itself, a uh, little Chartier's Creek as it comes in. And that's, that's what it was initially before the lake was dammed up back in 1942. In, in fact, uh, Alcoa, at an interesting point, Alcoa decided that they needed water during World War II. And uh, so what they did was they purchased this property and, uh, and dammed up the, the little Chartier's Creek and made, made the lake there because they were intending to make aluminum propellers for the airplanes that were being used in World War II. And uh, because of that, uh, that's where the lake came from. 
uh, in in the fift late 50s, I believe it was, uh, they finally decided they no longer needed this lake, obviously, and so they turned it over to the State uh, Fish and Boat Commission. And since that time, uh, the Fish and Boat Commission has has this property, and uh, every spring they uh, have a they put trout in, and uh, trout season opens up uh, usually what, about the second week in April. I think it's the second Saturday of S April. Second Saturday of April. Don't hold me to that. And uh, at that point. Uh, the upper portion of the of the lake is pretty much lined with fishermen, all trying to get their their trout for the year. But at any rate, okay, we had the trail that came across, and now we, this extends down this way. I think we lost something here. Let me. Uh, this here's McDowell Road. Uh, and right now, the Fish and Boat Commission does not own this piece of land to get into McDowell. The plan is for them to uh, get, either get a lease or a right away, right or some way to allow them to build a road, take a road up here, so that we can get automobile traffic down this road, which we would then pave and put in a parking lot to make it, uh, again, easier to, to get over into the to this area uh, and, and, and onto this trail. So the idea, again, being that uh, what we're going to do is because of all that silt that I talked about that has to be taken out of the lake over these many years, we are putting in uh, the, the, fish, the uh, Corps of Engineers is working on a, a silt tra trap that can take the silt as it comes down the uh, the Little Chartier's Creek and take the silt out of the water uh, so that it doesn't flow in and fill up the lake again like it is now. And uh, so once you do that, you have to empty it, just like any, any kind of uh, filter needs, needs cleaning out. And we will then be able to bring trucks down here to take that silt and haul it off to wherever we need it. But at any rate, that's, that's an addition. So then, uh, once again, this will be another uh, another parking lot with the uh, with the uh, picnic picnic tables and re and a restroom, and uh, then also from that, then there will also one another bridge going across across to here, Glen Glen Cannon, is, which is another housing development up here in North Strabane. We intend to also provide access to the trails from, from that area. And there's many people li live up in here. So the idea is that they can come down. Now the one thing about this, this whole area in here, this is considered pristine property. In other words, there's hardly anybody has ever been here. It's just like nature, nature made it years and years back. Okay. And so it's, it's, one, oh, it's a wonderful area that we can provide nature, trail, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of the ecosystems uh, mm -hmm. would be uh, captured in this area that we don't have anywhere. And to have this that close to Donaldson's Crossroad, I think really is extraordinary. Just, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's yes, hard to... when you to stand on the other side of the lake, you yeah. think you're out in the middle of the North Woods somewhere. There just, you go. Uh, you don't see or even hear the traffic sure. from such a built-up area. Yeah. I think also it would be good for people who haven't really been to the lake recently uh, to come and visit. I mean, we've done a lot of improvements already, and uh, I think you'll be impressed. In April, as everybody was saying, is the beginning of fishing season, and the, the, there's a lot of energy on the lake. So I think you'll see that it's really a, a valuable uh, community asset and you know, why we want to work so hard to keep it. And, and one of the things that, as, as I've gone through here and talked about the map and the plans and the trails and all this stuff, is uh, it's amazing, but that stuff doesn't come by itself. You can't just say it and it happens. You need funds, and you need people to work in raising the funds. We need people to work in uh, building the things. A lot of the things that we expect to build here and the trails and that will be volunteer labor. And uh, 
So in, in all of this, we expect that uh, uh, we, we're going to ask for participation from both North Strabane, Bain, Peters Township, and anybody that is would be interested in helping out uh, this. The Montour Trail people, I'm sure, will be working with them to help them because they've got a lot of experience in putting together the Montour Trail. I and thought, Joe, we had to have some matching funds. Is that right? Sometimes we need matching funds. It depends on the grant. To develop this, this plan, the state provided half the cost, and we as a committee have had to provide the other half of the cost. Mm -hmm. The small grant that I spoke of that we have for building the kiosk did not require matching funds. Mm -hmm. And so it just depends on what kind of a grant you're applying for. Competition is heavy mm -hmm. when we're looking for grants because a lot of people want grants. But uh, we don't have to we'll, pay that money back, is that right? Yeah, mm -hmm. grants money you don't have to pay back, and uh, it's essential in doing this. This is a very big project. We're talking a lot of money mm -hmm. to bring all of this about. So I think what we're also saying is that we need all kinds of support, whether it be uh, funds as well as labor, as well as maybe people to join our committee that are really ready to roll up their sleeves and yeah. get some action. Yeah. Get some work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We've mentioned, uh, Wally's mentioned, the fact that the Army Corps of Engineers is working with us on this. And, and while this is a federal agency, the Army Corps of Engineers projects do not come cheap either. They require 35 percent matching funds. So if you're looking at a project that is hundreds of thousands of dollars, we're still looking at thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to raise. So when Carol says we're going to be looking to the local community for money, she's, she's saying um, a, an absolute fact and something mm -hmm. that's going to be going on. The committee will be working, we'll do the best we can, but we can't do it as a group uh, at this point of about five or six active working people. We need more people and we welcome Absolutely. both financial and... and um, Membership, I, not, membership is not the right word, but people to be on the committee to help with the planning, the grant writing, all of the all and of the things that go with bringing a project like this to reality. And and the people to to solicit uh, the funds. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have many corporations and many businesses in this area that, uh, as we've been talking about the recreational plan, uh, we've had many public meetings. Uh, at uh, Little Lake Theater, you remember those? Mm -hmm. And uh, many people that attended those, that were people that were certainly interested in keeping Cannonsburg Lake, uh, indicated at that time, you know, what can we do? When can we do it? We're at that stage now. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we know what, what the costs are going to be, uh, and we're, the Corps of Engineers is developing how they're going to clear out the lake. and. Uh, so that's, that's where we are now. So and I think we have a couple, I think, take-home messages. One would be that the lake, I think, we've tried to reinforce as a great resource from the past and for future generations. We must protect the lake so that we have it around a while, and we need your help, whether it be in contributions of time, money, um, Thinking. to make this work. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yes, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like this quote. I don't know how you will like it, but... Uh, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Another one I, I like, if not now, when? If not me, who? So I guess it's up to all of us, us around the table as well as our community to really uh, pull together and see if we can save this lake and make it better than ever. That concludes our final program. We hope that you have been inspired to come out and enjoy all that Cannonsburg Lake has to offer. Copies of this three-part series will be distributed to area libraries for future viewing. Thank you for watching.